Coral reefs is what gives life to the sea. They cover less than 1% of the ocean floor, but supports an estimate of 25% of all marine life. These magnificent animals have lived in our oceans for 500 million years, and today they generate half of the Earth's oxygen. But how does coral reproduce and spread across the ocean floor? This is the birth of a reef. The Gulf of Thailand is a shallow and nutrient-rich area thanks to the many rivers that feed into it. Far into the Gulf we find the small island of Got Dao. Famous for its rich marine life, scuba divers flock to these shores to visit the many reefs and pinnacles the island has to offer. In one bay we find the Conservation Center RCP, or New Heaven Reef Conservation Program. They have been monitoring and protecting coral reefs since they were founded back in 2007. Many students and volunteers visit to learn about and help the reefs. But today is a special day. Instructor Kirsty and her team are hoping to witness an event that only happens a few times a year. They have been preparing for weeks and been looking forward to it even longer. The divers are all well aware that this night might be the highlight of their visit to the island. Hopeful and excited, they set out. Coral reefs are highly sensitive to light, especially on a night like this. The white light emitted from underwater torches might delay or confuse the animals, hence red filters are attached to keep disturbance to a minimum. Now, it's a waiting game. The divers swim around and check different coral colonies. What they are looking for is something out of the ordinary. But they are not the only ones out. With the events about to unfold, the reef is teeming with all kinds of different life. Finally, we get the first sign. Small round shapes start to emerge from various coral species. This is what the team has been waiting for. This process, known as setting, is the first step in what is described as the largest synchronous birthing event on planet Earth. The corals are spawned. Slowly, the various species of corals start to let go. Small clusters of eggs are released and start floating towards the surface. The scientist starts to collect eggs from various species. To them, this is more than a stunning visual event. They are part of a program that is trying to help corals survive in the future, and the collection they do here provides data to researchers around the world.
as the night progresses, the spawning intensifies. More and more corals are releasing their eggs. Other corals start to release sperm. The sperm also floats to the surface and fertilizes the eggs. From here, the fertilized eggs drift with the currents and a small percentage of them are able to settle on suitable hard substrates somewhere at sea. This is how corals spawn. spawn at the same time across vast distances around the world. It is still a mystery to us how this is done. For corals to be able to spawn, it takes a lot of energy and it leaves them vulnerable. Over the next months, the island experiences a heat wave that raises the sea temperatures by several degrees. This is bad news for corals. For many coral colonies, the spawning was their last act. With the increased stress of ocean temperatures, many corals start to bleach, meaning they are slowly dying. This is how fragile these reefs are and why it's so important to continue to work to protect them. With oceans warming up and other human-introduced stress factors remain unchecked, the very foundation of life in the sea could be lost forever. But through conservation efforts such as Angkot Dao, there is still hope for the future of corals.